Greetings and uh, hello from Southern California. I wish I were with you in Australia, but what a privilege to be uh, in the room with you. And thank you for what each of you mean to the ministries that you serve as board members. Gary asked me to talk about the four social styles in the boardroom. And uh, if you're typical, it's like welcome to the board and after your first meeting you're going, yikes. That person leads with their heart and the other one leads with their head and I wish they could combine and on that last vote we had a bunch of yeses and we had a bunch of noes. Why doesn't everybody just think like I do? So what we're going to talk about very briefly are two of the three, three powerful lessons. Spiritual gifts, strengths, social styles. For a little bit more on it, you could read Lesson 11 in the book, More Lessons from the Nonprofit Boardroom. Thrive with Four Kingdom Values. And that book is about effectiveness, excellence, and elephants. One of the three powerful lessons is spiritual gifts. I love the book, uh, What You Do Best in the Body of Christ by Bruce Bugby. Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, you all own Bibles, so uh, that's not what I was asked to speak about, but it's a part of understanding other people and the gifts they bring to the board. The second S is strength finders. Many of you are familiar with and have probably taken the Gallup Strength Finders Assessment. You can go online or get the book. And Gallup says there's 34 strengths in these four major areas. Recently I did help somebody with an assessment and their top five strengths were in just two of the areas. Is that a problem? It's not a problem because while one person can't have all the strengths, your team, your board uh, can make them all work together. Uh, I've been on a board that has a little tent card at every meeting with my top five strengths. Focus is my top strength. Uh, maybe you might consider that. But those are two of the three powerful S's. I want to really talk this morning, this afternoon, whatever time you're seeing this, about the social styles. And there's all kinds of material that I can uh, refer you to. One is the social styles handbook. Plan A for some boards is what this looks like. Boring, nobody's engaged, and a lot of board meetings are like that, unfortunately. I wanna encourage you to think about plan B. What if we empowered board members to leverage their God-created sweet spots to fulfill their holy calling as board members. Now, in a brief 10 minutes, I can't give you everything you need to do to leverage everyone's sweet spot, but I believe that the four social styles is one way that you can understand who's around the table and how God has created them to use in their work as board members. I urge you to become a student of your top leader, your CEO, your executive director, your senior pastor, your board chair, and then the other board members around the table by observing just three simple things, pace, priority, and versatility. And with this warning, Larry Wilson from the Wilson Learning Center says, treating people the way we want to be treated can be wrong 75% of the time and right only 25% of the time. So social styles will help you figure that out. So those three words, pace, assertiveness and pace. Some people are askers and other people are tellers. My wife, Joanne, is an asker. She'll say, can I ask you a question? A teller never says, can I ask you a question? Other people tend to be slower, other people tend to be fast. My wife is more on this side of the continuum and I'm more on the tell or fast side. So that's pace. Secondly, priority or responsiveness. Uh, some people tend to be control versus emoting. Uh, you observe them and their posture is, is rather controlled. Other people you observe and they're just, their hands are going like crazy. Uh, other people are more about tasks and facts and that's actually me. Still others are more about feelings and intuition. And so you've got all these people around the boardroom and you say, how in the world do I figure out, how do I leverage how God made them? So one of the opportunities 
is to understand that you make a judgment about somebody when you meet them for the first time, perhaps a new board member, but the problem is you're not doing it with any real data. So the social scientists got together and they figured out that there's really four basic styles, analytical, driving, amiable, and expressive. If you go back to here and put a mark where you are on this continuum and a mark where you are on this continuum, I tend to be somewhat here and somewhat here, so I would be what is called a driving style, a driver. And people that know me would say, that's exactly it. My wife Joanne is more on the analytical side, slower, ta task-oriented, uh, but not in the amiable or expressive quadrant. And that's not just stereotyping people, it's a, it's a God-honoring way to say, I want, I want to understand how God made them so that I can make them comfortable in the zone that they're comfortable in, and vice versa. I want other board members to be comfortable with how God made me. So, here's a, a little hint about each of them. An analytical values thinking, that would be my wife. Uh, a driver, somebody who's in the driving style, values control. I, I actually do like to control things. I don't always get the chance. Amiable values relationships and expresses value intuition. They kind of go by the gut. I was driving in this morning, boss, and I thought of this great idea. What do you, we've done no research, no thinking, uh, but intuition, and it often gets an expressive uh, quite a ways ahead. Uh, Another way to look at the four social styles is when people are under pressure, what do they do? An analytical avoids, they all start with the letter A, an analytical avoids, a driver becomes autocratic under pressure, an amiable acquiesces, they kind of give in just to get out of the difficult situation, and many times an expressive will attack. So that's one way you can figure out around the room when there's tension, you can kind of read their social style based on how they handle under pressure. Now, here's what's really interesting. Two styles have pace in common. Analyticals have the same pace as amiables, slower, and driving style and expressives have the same pace faster. So I have a lot in common with them. Analyticals and amiables have a lot in common. And then what about priority? Analyticals don't have the same priority, but because analyticals and drivers are interested in tasks, amiables and expressives are interested in relationships, these people have the same thing in common. Well, you've already figured it out. Yikes! Amiables and drivers have nothing in common, and they often have a hard time getting along with each other. And analyticals and expressives don't have pace or priority in common, they have a hard time. When I get called in to consult with the board and I find out there's a relational an issue, I would say 80% of the time it's often between people that are don't have pace or priority in common. So what's the big idea then? We've got pace, priority, but the key is versatility. As a driving style, I'm not going to be an amiable, but I need to help the amiable feel comfortable. The analytical wants to really think things through, but the expressive wants to have a lot more fun with it. Every decision-making style is different, but we need to be versatile in taking the best of all of those. So you can go on my website, managementbuckets.com, click on the 20 buckets and click on the people bucket, and you'll see uh, charts like this, the six tips for analytical style, take your time, driving style, respect their time, they like to move things along, amiable style, approach conflict carefully, and the expressive style, laugh with them, recognize their contributions, lighten up, uh, lots of resources available to help you be more successful in the boardroom. Uh, God has called you for a purpose as a board member. And I love this quote from Bruce Bugby's book, Why are you doing what others can do when you are leaving undone what only you can do, what only God has made you to do? And when you understand your style, you can answer that much, much better. So here's the question for you today. 
What's your one big takeaway or strategic next step as a result of learning about the three powerful S's, especially the social styles? And if you want to do more reading, uh, you can read my book, Mastering the Management Buckets. Chapter 7 is about the people bucket, and chapter 9 is about the team bucket, all the strengths. Thanks for listening, and God bless you as you serve your organization.